During the American Revolution, the lives of Benny were in chaos. It was a world of chaos for those who were present. Many were called upon, many responded, and some gave their all. That revolution and those people made a difference. But what about today? We've got the war in Ukraine. We've got the Middle East conflict and tension. We've got mass shootings, political intrigue and stupidity, inflation, pandemic, climate change, and an extreme stupidity in social media. I guess we're experiencing our own version of a revolution. I don't know how anyone can watch the news anymore. And the picture painted there, it appears our world is detonating with religious, political, cultural, and ideological contrasts. The educational systems, which were once at the top of the heap around the world, have followed the new depths of illiteracy and ignorance. In math, 2 plus 2 equals 6, if it makes you feel good. In history, our heroes of the past are now villains. In language, many words no longer mean what they used to, and there are many you just can't say. In science, the concept of non-partial, unbiased inquiry, questioning, testing, and proving have fallen into, if it doesn't fit what those in power want, then keep quiet about it and pretend you didn't notice. And don't you dare point it out to anyone else, you heretic denier. But even the one sacrosanct environment of sports has been overwhelmed by protest, politics, and pessimism. And the influencers of one stripe or another pointing fingers are condemning and predicting doom. Is there no way out? What do we do? Should we be like that character, Major Kong, played by Slim Pickens in the classic movie, Dr. Strangelove, and just ride that atomic bomb down to the impact like it's a wild brawl? Well, it ain't over till the fat lady sings. Or would that be more correctly stated, it is not finished until the gravitationally challenged birthing person presents their aria. <laughs> there is another vision available. A perspective that is powerful and positive, it is something better, something that is, dare I say it without being mocked, hopeful. I am not naive. I have witnessed firsthand the insanity and brutal callousness of our world. I promise you that as bad as it is presented to us, it is not as bad as it seems. A very wise man named Fred Rogers once told this simple story. He said, as a child, he saw all the awful things that happened on the news. He asked his mother about it, and she said, awful things happen in life, but when they do, keep your eyes open and look for the helpers. Who are the helpers? Are they the ones who bravely put themselves between danger and the rest of us? The ones who are willing to sacrifice their lives for others? and for principles, and for liberty. The soldiers, the policemen, the firemen, and those in so many other roles who have chosen to, and are ready to, throw themselves into the breach. I saw them, hundreds of them. I was among them over 20 years ago when aircraft were slammed into the Twin Towers and the Pentagon, and an empty field in Pennsylvania, and the whole nation was unalterably changed. And there are other helpers, potentially even more powerful than those we traditionally look to. I saw them following the horrors of 9-11, waving flags on overpasses, helping each other, donating blood, comforting those who mourned. I saw them teaching their children quietly, anonymously donating money and time. When there is a crisis, it's still happening. Those other helpers, the often overlooked heroes, there are more of them than ever before. They're quiet, dignified, courageous, innovative, and ordinary folks. In every home, 
and in every town, and in every state, all around the world. Those helpers that Mr. Rogers was told to look for are everywhere. They are you, your families, and your neighbors, ready to step up and do what they can. Though we are in a time when ugliness, divisions, and stupidity are magnified perhaps tenfold or more beyond reality, my hope is strong. Being present in this world means that you will make a difference, or you will have an impact in one way or another. You will contribute or not. You can't avoid it. But it is your choice. What difference will you make? What can I do in this world of chaos, you ask? Well, the mindset is pretty simple. Don't give in to fear. Refuse to be separated by race, color, creed, or ideology. That destructive mindset of negative, semi-paranoid, everyone else is awful, so what can I do? Let it go. It is less than useless. Let the love that is in your heart spark the courage that is sitting right next to it and do something. Help where and when you can. And it's important to understand you can completely disagree with someone without being disagreeable. And the actions you can take, well, they're pretty low key. Just do good. Show your children and others how to do good. Take deliberate action. Be kind to a stranger. Mow your neighbor's lawn. Offer a cold bottle of water on a hot day. Pick up the trash someone else left behind and throw it away. Pay someone a compliment. Here's a simple challenge for each of us. Pick one of these simple actions and do it. Smile. Be careful. They are more contagious than COVID. Say hello. It can completely change someone's day. Be a little patient. Keep your middle finger and your epithets to yourself. And show the good to others when you find it. Talk it up. Give others hope, too. Look to heaven once in a while, even if you have doubts. Follow through on a positive and simple idea of your own. And for you overachievers, do more than one. More than once. <laughs> if over time this effort goes viral, it will change the whole world. Just be good. Think good and do good. It chases away the darkness and fear, and it becomes contagious. It is really that simple. It is absolutely, unequivocally, unconditionally that powerful. So go ahead. Start your own revolution. Thank you.